Hey guys, it's Will here coming at you with a video that is being recorded on our live stream, hence the setup. But we are trying something new, make sure our camera settings are correct, make sure our microphone's correct, and other things. Along with, we got some amazing new art for the thumbnails and the end screens for our Twitch streams. So, shout out to the artist who made it, she is awesome and is, be, is beginning her, their steps into commissions. So once I find information about, for, about them and where you can find the links and stuff uh, and all that stuff, I will be glad to put it down below. I was very happy with it, loved it. Did a little bit of touch up to make it into a thumbnail, but it works. So yeah, go say your praise about it in the chat down below. But with that, we're gonna get right into it. We are starting, as you can tell from the thumbnail, in the title of this Twitch stream. Um, we're finally beginning our series for the year, which I have three projects. I have three projects that I'm trying to do this year. Um, one is the, and I ha I'll have face cams and stuff for this more in depth and like tables and stuff laid out right now. This is just the test of the feel, the oblig obligatory, what is X game? How do you get into X game? So on and so forth. But yeah, so what do you need to get into a game like Bolt Action? And this this can also apply to a lot of in other games that are not Games Workshop. Games Workshop, there's slight little differences, but it, it can usually about to be the same thing. And this is something I'd also say to people at my store when I used to work there uh, for a gaming store. And that is, always check the website first. Find out YouTube is a great source material. Take a look at Let's Plays and stuff. But I find, for me, that there was some games that I actually had to play and pick up the models physically myself. And I enjoyed that a lot more than actually watching people on YouTube play and stuff. So, this series might not be for you if you want a nice in-depth with cool cuts, cut cutaways, and B-roll, and beautiful models, and, you know, scripted videos. This might not be a series for you, and I do not take any, you know, any um, disrespect, whatever the other word is. If you want to go somewhere else, that's 100% fine. This is just me doing this for fun, so. And I've always wanted to try this. This is something new. Again, I ramble a lot. This is part of a condition I have. It's just, I do, I'm scatterbrained, so please forgive me. Uh, end videos, I try my best to cut out big long gaps, but videos like this where it's a stream, I'm gonna try my best to be good so I can just upload it straight to YouTube. So, starting in a war game, finding a game store, especially a local one that's not like a Games Workshop, is your best bet because that's where the community is going to grow. Games Workshop is just a mill to get people in and out fast, and it's just like where hopes and dreams go to die. Now, I have a personal bias against Games Workshop, uh, and I will try my best in these series or whenever I talk about them not to be neutral, but I just want to be headed up before I start saying this, but... Games Workshop, those who are, like, what is, and this is leading into a thing, where this is like, what is a war game? What is the war gaming hobby and stuff? And I'm here to tell you that it's not just Games Workshop. A lot of people, when they have started to put an emphasis that Games Workshop is war gaming, they are one and the same. There is no difference. I'm here to say that there's, that's not just the case. You know, there's, again, bolt action, other games. So war gaming is a term meant for tabletop skirmish games or tabletop army games where you use uh, tokens, cards, cardboard pieces, things to represent uh, squads or a currency of sorts that goes against another player or the, the game itself if it has, you know, like a step-by-step -step, uh, pick your own adventure book style combat, but again, which emphasizes mostly on combat. Think like uh, or StarCraft on the table, like except for the mini the miniatures, or the 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 um the models you see in game are made out of plastic, and you're moving them with your hand, or Risk, but you know instead of the whole country or the whole planet, you're zoomed on to like one province, and you're you're leading them and stuff. And that is basically what a war game is. Now, if that seems kind of interesting to you, and maybe you um or you have a kid or something that wants to get out, you want to get them away from the screen, this is another great way to do it. 
uh, it can be a lot of fun. It can be awesome creativity, and you kind of find your way, just like life. It's almost like a second, like, lifestyle, basically. And it's it can be good, and there, everyone has a different level. You'll find your way. It's awesome. Like, I got some um, Napoleonics here that I'm getting into. I got, again, my World War II stuff. I have, you know, Age of Sigmar, my corn dogs. And we even have some, you know, smaller tanks. And even, you know, some models I am starting from Kickstarter. So this, this can lead you to a lot of things. But basically it boils down to a miniatures, uh, a scale replica game where two, to, two plus players go head to head using tactics, strategies, and rules to play out scenarios in fantasy, sci-fi, and historical settings. Now to get into one of these games, you're going to need, again, uh, a few things. You can go these different ways depending on what level of life you're in or your current situation. For a lot of the kids that would come into the store or people who maybe might be into, you know, like um, Magic the Gathering already or ignore my hand as I try to line things up here. There we go. It's lined up. Um, again, those who are into Magic and stuff like that who may have their money already tied up in something. The best way I'd recommend going about these is probably doing the age-old check the website, check the YouTubes, or if you have Tabletop Simulator, which I highly recommend for anyone to get, even if you don't want to play war games. It has a huge library of board games on there. A lot of um, Kickstarters who have board games and stuff, they uh, make digital copies on there so you can play it and help them change the rules so when they release physically they'll be play tested. So I recommend picking up that. It usually goes on sale all the time where you can buy like a, a button like a four pack bundle to give to your friends for like ten dollars and stuff. But it is the best way to actually try out models and games and stuff and we might actually use it a couple of times for purposes of gameplay. But that would be the best place I'd recommend starting. And then after a while give it a read, read up on the lore. Games like Games Workshop has a lot of great lore to it. Historical games have a lot of, you know, real life history, so on and so forth. Which leads into a little discussion that has been brought up by a few channels in the past, which is why would you play historical or why is historical a little bit more or less popular than say like games like um game like Games Workshop or Malifo, Infinity and stuff like that. And the historical side of things can be a little daunting to people. But I want to uh, kind of say out there to people that historical wargaming, think of it just like a normal war game. It's just its setting, its theme, its models are going to be based around an era. And most of the time, a lot of people who play historicals, yeah, they do like to, you know, try their best to be historically accurate because that's half the fun sometimes for people. Just like for others, the painting side of models are more fun than, uh, you know, actually playing the game. And that's fine. Everyone has a way that they want to play this. And again, if you're watching this and stuff, it's kind of like I'll loop myself here. Remember, I'm on Twitch. If you have any questions, please feel free to message down below in the comment section or on the side here in the, in the Twitch chat. Uh, I'll make sure to answer those as we do these sort of stuff. And uh, if you answer in the chat comment section down below on YouTube. Next video I do of these, I'll answer in a little Q&A session either before the video or after, but we'll see there. But a lot of butts. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's really, it's, it's, it might not be a thing, but if you're daunted because, you know, you don't want to be shunned or something or like, oh, I made a mistake because I don't know the history, just do it. Just have fun. Just build the models the way you want, play the game, paint them the style you want. Most of the time, people who play historicals are just happy to have somebody else play their game. And as long as you basically just, you know, U.S. Marines or whatever are green and Germans are gray, it's not, it's not a huge deal. And I would highly recommend anyone to check out a historical game sooner or later. But if you really like that sci-fi games workshop way, 
all power to you. This is your hobby, your time. Do what you want to do. And with that long just rambling ahead of us and 60 minutes into this video, I think it is time we actually get into the meeting gritty. And again, just want to give us a heads up that even though we're using Bolt Action as the beginner test video of this, it's just this game series, game um, game system I'm most comfortable with and one I'm most ex I most love. This can apply to any other game system out there from most of the point, as long as it's not Games Workshop, they all generally kind of follow the same route. It might not be the exact, but mo for most of the time, how you get the army rules, how you get the models, uh, the rule books and stuff are generally laid out about the same. Uh, Games Workshop's the only one where they really have everything just is DLC basically. Just you have to buy every little thing, every little step of the way. So there's that. So going into the next stage here, you have figured out you like the idea of wargaming. You've tried out tabletop simulator maybe. Maybe you played another friend's army from work or something. Or you went to your local game store and watched a game or something or checked out the models and now you want to get into your selected game. Now, another thing I have seen a lot and this is something uh, I think personally a lot of wargamers not new war gamers, but like long time players, or you know, at least a couple of years, need to learn a little bit of patience, especially with North America right now is dealing a shortage of Games Workshop due to the lack of inventory and ability to get stuff out because they've switched to a fully automated warehouse system. From what I've heard, I can't cannot confirm this anymore, but I've heard this. So ordering from your local game store, trying to find one, if they don't have a rule book or a starter set on the shelf, just be patient, get them to order it. The more you get into them, the more they're willing to work with you and they're gonna be nicer. You just have a better time overall. If you absolutely cannot find a game store that sells the game that looks interesting to you, online sales through eBay, Amazon, or their own web stores, depending on where you live in the world, a lot of miniature games is made in Europe. So you will have to deal with that. Though you can also find a lot of models and rules that are digital, like One Page Rules, which is an online store. And then a lot of their stuff is STL files that you can print or import into Tabletop Simulator or, you know, get them to print them for you at a reasonable um, competitive price. Uh, so yeah. So you found the game you want. You've asked them to order in the rule book. Now you've got the rule book. You, you basically are getting your steps. What do you need to order? Getting into it, any war game should have a sort of rule document, and this also applies to uh, RPGs also with the starter box, but all your games are going to have a rule book. Normally they are the size, um, dimension-wise, not necessarily thickness-wise, of basically think like a small, um, you know, like math textbook from junior high or middle school, whatever you people call it. And... Or, a lot of these starter boxes, and Games Workshop used to do this in the past too, they'll make you have these, what they call an A5 rulebook. So, a lot of games, again, like I'm saying with um, indie books, indie, indie publishers like Osprey or uh, Infinity and stuff, I believe, also does this. I could be wrong. Uh, I know... Um, or the opposite they'll do it too is with um, Star Wars Legion. They'll do them either two ways. And I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm losing my track here. Please. Okay, I'm back. So a lot, of the, a lot of games will have it where the rule book is basically all you'll need to play. But other games like say Star Wars Legion or uh, Horde, War Machine and Hordes. The rules for the models in your army are actually cards that come with the models so that way you're not necessarily flooded with rules you don't need and this can be a positive and depends on how you really want to go if you want a more you know strategic game more competitive game or maybe you just want to have a fresh list to kind of just list list craft if you like list crafting games like bolt action and um battle tech and stuff is going to be great because a lot of the rules kind of come with all their main books and there's very little books you have to buy to at least play to begin with and stuff. Games like War Machine and Hordes, they have books that will have all the models in them, or at least they did when I played. 
with their rules and stuff so you can have kind of like have everything you want with a little bit of lore but you actually just needed the cards that's all you really needed to play so say the game you want to play was bolt action here we have our our rule book and a lot of these little books are great because they can fit inside your army case and stuff and that's something we'll get into next time but a lot of these games will have your rule books here. This is something you'll need. And the nice part about a lot of these games are they're going to have basically your army, if I can get there, whoop, they're going to have your army already in the book. So you do not need to buy any extra codexes. You don't need to buy your models right away. You can just grab your list here and it'll tell you how to play. Now going on here, we have our our, our, our book what's the next thing you need to buy so depending on which game you're playing a lot of these games use basically they all use the same sort of mechanic stuff uh, some will be a little bit different they'll try to be played different but they all in the end use the same sort of similar thing and with bolt action you've decided you want to play and if you're playing we're well, saying you assumed you played with a friend you got a two-player starter box it has everything you'll ever need a two a starter box for your war game of choice is the ultimate was base the the choice i highly recommend if you want to get into a game just buy the starter box and a starter box is a great value to ch and resource to know if the game is meant for you because telling by the price its contents and its quality it will tell you the uh the feel to what that company that game is going to be like for you where things like games workshop where they're you know like three hundred dollars for a starter box or something like that and you barely get like six models and you know no real rules for them and stuff you just get the models and how to build guide and that's really it is a great example would be like this hobby is going to be expensive everything's going to be separate but the models are going to look beautiful and everyone keeps talking about it so and they had all of them in my store so you know it's going to be super popular but super expensive. Whereas games like Bolt Action or Star Wars Legion and stuff like that, they had, especially if you get like certain ones, they're like $200 or less. They had a rule book, dice, measuring sticks, and two equal sized armies. And the box looks great. Though the store may not have all of them, they might have one or two different you know, starter boxes then you're like, okay, the, the game is going to be affordable and collectible, but it's not going to be super popular. So that's the one thing that might also affect your judgment. Another thing you'll look into. So we're, we're continuing our little hypothetical story here. We're assuming that we've watched YouTube. Uh, we watched some battle reports, you know, saw some trailers for the models. We have went to our game store and we have asked to get into the game and now we're thinking, well, how do we want to get into it? So first off is to buy those starter boxes. So for bolt action, you know, every army has a starter box. And they're starting to make new ones for sub-factions too. So like France, Hung Hungary, and stuff like that. Or getting your two-player starter box. But again, in this hypothetical one, it's just us getting into it. So we'll say we asked them to order in a American... Uh, airborne starter box for us or a Japanese starter box but it has to come in it's going to be a few weeks but they have the rule book on the shelf so you ask them to order that starter box in and we're going to grab the rule book now you've got your rule book where do we go next with this now this splits depending on which game you're playing if you're playing a game like War Machine where it's a card where the information come in cards then you're set then you can skip to the next step. Now, if you're playing a game that is designed to be a little bit more tactical, more grand army, oh yeah, grand, the different games. So, grand army game is again, yeah, your your Warhammer, where you're or your epic scale games, where you're playing with, you know, ten squads of dudes and a couple of tanks, commander and all that stuff. A large model. You're playing with basically thirty to about 200 plus models in a game and again we'll, we'll get into the terminology here later on in the video uh, stream what is like a squad what is an infantry what's a unit terminology 
that you'll need to learn. So right now we're just getting into the what do you need to buy as a new person that maybe you've seen a couple of videos or maybe you've flipped through the rule book. So say again you're getting your rule book you're picking it up and you flip through it you saw like say you, you saw an army in there uh, again as an example because we have them on the field here you saw the Japanese army and that looked really cool to you you know maybe you've seen some movies and stuff the or played world at war and things you like the the look of them or maybe with Warhammer you saw the you know space marine poster on the window and you thought that armor looks sick so what you can do next is you get their army book or their codex which is something on the lines of like these these for uh warlord games is called army books the all their games kind of have these their skirmish games i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm not really into their skirmish games so like their new ones like the uh the men of men of iron whatever they're called the skirmish game for judge dread and stuff but for the most part your your games are gonna have books like these and what these are are your rules in full list of models excuse me your full list of models for any game you're going to play uh games workshop uses this privateer press uses this osprey and world world use these uh, Infinity has some sort of codex-like thing. But, yeah. And what these basically do is, as you can see, there's we brought up twos because some of these, and other games are going to kind of have this too, unless you're at Games Workshop, which you're going to split every little rule into every little thing, is your major rules. So, as we take an example here of Japan, as I just bumped the camera, as you can see, you have our contents, but this basically gives you a list of every sort of... This is basically going to have a rules for every little sort of model that you're going to play with, along with live examples of how to paint things, model pictures and stuff, and themes and theater selectors and stuff. So there's you have these sort of things, which is a pure single army book. And again, to start, depending on your game system, ask your staff, your local staff, about this. They'll, they're will they always there to help you. Um, ask what you'll need to play. They're generally good at guiding you. But this might be a little guide to be like, hey, you don't necessarily need to get all that stuff they're saying. Depending on your friends, your setting, and all this stuff. But usually ask them, does this game require a army book to play truly? Or does the army book just have all the stuff there and then I can access. So basically, like, does my arm, does the core rule book have listings for the units to play? Does it have the rules for armies and stuff? Or do I need to buy this? Or does that starter box we just ordered come with rules to play? And if they say yes, the rule book has it, or yeah, your star army will have the rules for the models in there, just follow how to build them, you're golden. Now, say if the person doesn't really know because the game is new to you, or, to, or they know little bits, like maybe they just restock that game, but they don't necessarily play it themselves. And there's not really any players there playing that game or looking around. And, or you might just not feel comfortable asking the public. Then it is generally a safe idea to grab one of these books for a faction that you think looks cool. Because worst case scenario, you just have a cool book that will give you some historical inspiration, depending on the setting. Because even Games Workshop's Warhammer games have a in-universe in lore to it which is awesome i will give that to games workshop they make some of the best lore for a sci-fi sitting out there but yeah or you have so going to that or you have books like this where i call these com combo codexes where they'll have basically a faction or a section where all the models might not make enough to be their own army so they kind of push them together um games like blood bowl uh, Warhammer Old World, they kind of do combo books like this where they'll have them being like kind of thematic together. So like Warhammer Old World, they have the Book of Good, which has, you know, Bretonia and Sigmar and all the human stuff and order in it. And then there's the Army of Bad Guys, which has like, you know, Tomb Kings and all the Chaos factions. 
So your book, your army might be in here. So if you're saying buying online, you're like, hey, I want to play, um, I want to play Finland. But why does the Italian book keep popping up? Well, that's because the Italians in the Finnish, because they share a lot of the same models and their small armies are in the same book. So taking a look on that, just to like, you know, read online and stuff, kind of read the, the thing, take it, you know, take a flip behind the book here. It'll tell you that, but yeah, generally, they're going to be the same idea here where they have, you know, all the armies together. They'll be like, which armies and stuff. But these are basically your next buy after that. Ooh. And zoom. Anywho, so you picked up your book. You read that there's some things in it that's needed. And some of those is going to be, I don't have them on me, but you're generally going to need a tape measure, usually one that does up to about... 20 you at least want a measuring device that does about it was like how do they make them like five foot tape not five feet but you basically want something that usually does about like 70 inches you know measures up to 70 inches I forget how much that is in feet but they're they're used you know, basic tape measure you can buy from the dollar store or like a hardware store generally something you can easily handle in your hand preferably has like a locking slide or button Something that you can hold and not drop, because you know you don't want to drop stuff onto people's models. That wouldn't be fun for them. Uh, you're also going to need, uh, depending on your game, and this is where it can separate. This is why you kind of want to check into it. But for the majority, going off bolt action and other games like it, like Warhammer and uh, Infinity, generally you use D6s. I know I said that in Infinity. Infinity uses D12s or D20s, whatever. But generally, you're going to want D6s. And a D6 is a basically, think, a dice from Monopoly or any sort of Hasbro board game. You know, the little six-sided cubes. Basically, like this. You're going to want one of a guy like this. Generally, uh, there's a company called Chezex. They make a pack of these where there are about 32 to 36 of these dice in a box of the same color. Uh, a lot of games like to make dice that have cool little symbols based off stuff in them. But generally, just getting that Chezek dice for your uh, for your first one is where you want to start off with. Now, some games like Bolt Action are what you call a act a called a um, what's, the word was right there, but it is a randomized turn sequence game. A lot of these independent games like to try to do something a little bit different, but generally. All in all, they kind of follow the same sign of principles, you know, move, shoot, all that stuff. But for the most part, games like Flames of War, Warhammer, generally all you need is that those D6s in your, your tape measure and you're good. Other games like Legion or Bolt Action require a little bit more stuff, and we're going to get into that. So Legion, generally you buy a two-player starter box. That's where you have to start because it'll give you tokens, special measuring sticks specifically to that game, and dice. And other games like, you know, um, like Battletech will require a grid map. So buying those starter boxes are generally what you need. And Or if you don't really know, asking the store employee or watching YouTube is going to be better for those. I recommend checking out YouTube for those if those are games that you're more interested in. So I'm not going to be the very best one to answer those questions. I could maybe next video go look and tell you how to start with it. But for the most part, we're going to continue with bolt action. So bolt action, you're going to need something like this. Uh, they make one for almost every major faction and some special ones from time to time, like a limited release, release run of the um, um, Red Devils, which was like the British commando squad that took the Pegasus Bridge. I'm pretty sure that are the Airborne. But basically, or uh, um, a mug or a container, dice box, something with a closed lid. So you can put your dice in here, shake it up, pull one in there so you don't see what you're actually pulling. So yeah, so these are what you would call an order dice. Now you get these in two player starter boxes or if you buy one of these bags, normally a game store might follow it, but for the most part their online store does. Or if you buy a box, you will gain a pack of these dice. And you can choose what color you want. Now these are from the starter box for uh, Japan versus America. So you have your dice for the Japanese and you have your dice for US Marines. 
Now the idea is, for bolt action, quick little rundown, why you need these. And a lot of other game systems have something like this. Uh, there's one where you actually play with it like a poker deck and that kind of like what you draw and stuff activates things or you actually have a hand of poker cards to play like uh, Dead Man's Hand, which is a Western skirmish game. Or there's one that's like, uh, I think Song of Fice and Fire, the Game of Thrones miniature game, uses a sort of like cards, a card deck pull. Uh, no, it's Malifo. Malifo or Malifax, however you say it, uses a card based system. And Star Wars Legion does a back and forth thing where you pull from a tile or you play an activation card and you get a random little token. But either way, a lot of these games use a token system. And again, if you're playing a game like. War Machine, Flames of War, Warhammer, and you're not playing, you know, Kill Team. All these games have an I go, you go turn system, and this can be ignored. But this will be the next thing you'll have to buy if you're not buying a two player starter set, or buying a Tank Wars or Conflict 47 starter box for from from Bolt Act, like Warlord games. You'll have to buy a pack of these. And they usually, they go like the whole bundle goes about $30, but this pouch, these pouches that they officially make are really good quality. Like a lot of things that Warlord Games does that a lot of other companies doesn't do is they do great quality for a great price. And again, that might be another thing that gets you into it. Now, if you don't have the money, say, to buy all this stuff, getting that rule book first, and even finding one online, like an A5, one of these little pocket rule books, they're always going for dirt cheap on like Amazon and eBay and stuff like that. Or, you know, you can go online and find the rules there. Though I always say 100% support your local game store, support your local developers and stuff before you go online and look for rules. Things like, um, especially for playing super popular games like Warhammer, they have bat like apps you can use to make armies called like Battle Scribe. Um, Bolt Action has one called Easy Army. So if you wanted to do the tabletop simulator route, I'd go tabletop simulator with Easy Army and make an army on there. So now say I'm just gonna freaking reset that. You know, mats and stuff to play. Anywho, getting into that. So, you got all this stuff. Now, what else would you need to know about this game to play? If, say, you want to get into the world of bolt action here and stuff. Or, say, you want, you got it, you're getting into Warhammer and stuff like that. Well, next off you'll need is your models, which hopefully at this point you've confirmed what models you wanted and they've just come in. Getting off next, uh, a lot of these games, unless you're playing one like X-Wing or Battletech, a lot of these models are gonna come on built. And they're gonna come on a, what is called a sprue. Now a sprue is gonna be something like this here. Um, S-P-E-R-W, sprue. And your models are gonna come like this. They're gonna be pieces, torsos, arms, guns, this is like, what does this mean? Now, for your first time building, especially if you get a starter box, a lot of companies will kind of guide you how to build them. Uh, a reason why I personally like games like uh, Flames of War or Bolt Action is the starter boxes are great for newcomers and for old players. Because with those games, they give you, they don't just pick and choose or give you pre-posed models like other war games do which can be good for brand brand new people who play war or getting into war gaming but they give you actual full boxes as if you bought all them all the stuff that they throw in there separate and they're just like here you go now that can be kind of daunting for those who don't know their codec their their armies and stuff and this is why i said at that first stage why and explained what an army book was or what your your rule book is basically where to find those sources about your army is because they're going to tell you what you can and cannot take and again this is if you really care about being you know somewhat as you see it or 
you know, playing with others in the club. If you're playing with your friends and you just want to build your first models or your box of dudes um, in a way because they just look cool, as long as you're just like, hey, I easily can be like, yeah, this, I may have like, you know, four SMGs in the squad, but I'm only allowed to have one, or maybe I have five plasma guns and I'm only allowed one. Just be like, this guy who is, you know, pointing with plasma gun is the guy with the plasma gun, and everyone else has whatever, so on and so forth. And as you play, you know, kind of ask people how to do this, and you start building and you're getting more into watching YouTube videos, you'll learn, and you'll, you'll figure out what is what as you play, and you'll get a hold of what is what and stuff like that. Now, certain companies and stuff will do it in certain ways, but games like bolt action here how they do their models is if it's a vehicle if I can grab it here that's flags those are neat to have two but they do their instructions kind of one of two ways you'll either have a book that's like this which is going to be in depth how to build with, you know, how to paint guides and stuff, or <clears throat> listings of the sprues. Though this book came with a front cover that actually told you about the tank. I ripped it off because I like to keep those. Or, for their infantry, in a lot of war games companies, they all have sort of like their how you build a tank with a booklet and how you build their infantry will be kind of in a same style booklet. Focus, there we go. It'll come with something like this, and it'll kind of just point out, like, these are what these arms and stuff, and kind of give you examples. Sometimes they'll have a back where it'll tell you, like, hey, this is, you know, this setting, this paint style, this is what paints you'll need. You'll get one of these and stuff like that, build them up, and to build them, you're going to need a set of, I recommend, flat, flat, uh, flat backed. Uh, wire cutters or clippers whatever you want to call them a lot of companies make them for plastics this one is an older one I had that I used for metals so it's beat up don't use your really good expensive cutters on metal save those to wire cutters they can easily buy for like three or five bucks at a Home Depot or a, wherever your local hardware store is so you, you get your clippers then you're gonna get either your super glue or if you're using mostly like especially with modern day games workshop a lot of their stuff is plastic you can get uh, a plastic glue this is a Tamiya plastic cement it will work on these models there's some models out there where some plastic glues may not work with them uh, definitely check the manual before you glue it there will usually be a little section that says hey here's what you need to build it and Things like Rubicon models, Rubicon USA, a lot of their plastics are a ABS sort of material. Again, I'm not too 100% sure what that stands for, but you'll need a glue and you, they do make them from Tamiya and it'll say ABS in big bold letters. Uh, that's mostly a lot of like say Airfix, your hobby model models, like those models that have that weird sort of white pearl-esque colored plastic need those and your more gray plastic models like this will use just normal plastic glue i recommend plastic glue over super glue for models like these just because they're light um, they absorb the plastic glue really well and they're durable and you're building a lot of them and make sure you know in a ventilated area especially if you're super sensitive to fumes you know don't let the stuff get on your hands wipe them off or wash them when you're done and then for your more heavier models or things that, you know, mix with different materials or see-through and stuff, get yourself some super glue, especially resin and metal. You'll want this. Uh, you don't want to use plastic glue. I can't remember. Don't quote me on this, but it's one or the other. I highly recommend looking this up after you're done. I might do this also after I'm done. But it's either plastic glue or super glue. I think it's super glue. You don't want to use on windows unless you have a super glue that dries clear or is fumeless which is highly unlikely because that's how it works but uh one of the two glues will sm uh, will fog up 
those plastic windows because of how it reacts to the air and how it dries. I'm pretty sure it's super glue. You don't want to use on see-through stuff because it expands and it fogs if there's no air for it to escape. But anywho, uh, getting on to that, this is what you'll need next. And this is what you're most likely to see in your starter box. Going on to it, so basically that's all you'll really need to start playing. How to get into the games and what have you and what to get to really start, you know, just playing in general. Here are the few things you're going to learn. So we're gonna, we have our, first thing you want to buy we have is our rule book or we want to get a two player starter starter so this is going to be the first thing going down steps so this is basically going to be our steps so we're going to be starting our rule book player guide or read online. This is one I cannot emphasize enough. This one right here. I cannot emphasize enough on this one. Read online. Don't get pulled into what you see through videos, pictures and stuff because a, a big step and this is something you kind of just you unfortunately have to go through with games workshop stuff especially is you think if you, you find Warhammer it looks cool to you you pick up the two-player starter box or, or um, a starter box because the models look cool. And as you kind of play them and they change or something or you're trying to find your style, you end up finding a different army, watching it play, and you find that style is a lot cooler to you. And you're like, well, I just dropped like $600 into this army. I can't really switch to the other one. And there's, we can do another video later on about how to recover from that, but reading online and watching videos and playing like tabletop simulator which is your next one to this is table top sim slash watch play and for this one what I mean by watch play is go to a local game store and talk to people about it ask them questions not how is it played not how did you make your army, how did you build, it's just ask them how does the army feel? Uh, how are you enjoying the game? Is like, did you like this army? Did you play? Does it play well? Kind of like what's its play style? I, I'm interested in actually this army and I thought it was played like this and maybe they'll be like, oh no, it actually plays like this or something like that or like hey, I see a lot of these armies using this specific model or a lot of these things. What do I? How do I go about this stuff? Things like that. So that's why you want to watch it played. And again, if you can't find that local game store, that's where Tabletop Simulator is going to come in. You can find some people online through forums, be like, hey, or discords from uh, YouTubers. Be like, hey, I want to get into Warhammer. Or I want to get into... Um, um, Beyond the Stars or whatever you want to call it. And I, I don't have anyone to play with, but I have Tabletop Sim. Or, hey, can I watch you, your guys playing it on Tabletop Sim? Can you share play it through Discord? Or, last but not least, worst case, you can do YouTube. YouTube. So once you've done all this, and we'll just kind of like, this is stage one. One. The next one is to go to your game store or online and is to order slash buy find discretion for legal purposes I must highly 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 your own discretion for this but anyways so buy or order depending on where you are and you're gonna get your core rules 
free PDF. Because a lot of these games are starting to do like the basic rules for free online. So you can get that. Or your army book slash cards. Um, so, you, so these are the two things you'll want to buy. And this can range anywhere between about about 120 to about like 50 bucks depending on what you want to get and where you get it from and so for that that's our next stage so this is stage two then stage three you're going to buy supplies or find because you might have them at home a lot of this stuff you'll find at home so you'll either be I'll zoom in here a little bit more oh camera please no there we go so it'll be we're going to find why are you not focusing If it's focused for you guys, uh, it's good enough for me. I'm just trying to, you know, I don't want the camera to overheat again. So there we go. We fixed it. I got it. Thank you for staying here. And sorry again, RS, if I've been kind of all over and I'm not being really helpful. Again, this is a lot of just trying to get this worked and trying to figure out what I can and cannot do with my cameras and my setups here. And hopefully in the future will be a lot better. But you got to start somewhere. And just like with Wargaming, war taking that step in and just trying it is the least you can do and I'd recommend for this. So anyways, finding those supplies and you're going to probably most likely need, you know, your, your measuring system. So like measure, so like tape, tape measure. Uh, a lot, some games like Legion will have special sticks. Those who are longtime Warhammer players will remember the whippy sticks. Those were fun. You'll need dice and templates. Again, a lot of these rule books will have these uh, will be in the rule books or starter boxes. So again, if you're buying that two-player starter box, you can skip this section here. So if you're uh, not two-playering, so if you're not two-playering. You do these steps, two player star box, and what have you. The last but not least. Dwast for that. Yeah, there we go. Woo. I am a computer with a high RAM stick and a very shitty CPU. I can, I have, can get there quicker, but nowhere faster. Yeah, okay. So if we're not doing our two player star box, if, oh, that's a good question there. Um, the best way I'd recommend trying to find a way to find a game is uh you can do a lot of things like just check on facebook even you can search up your city's local gaming groups uh check google maps for a game store like a game store shop if you're talking about bolt action and you want to get into bolt action to play that way or independent games highly recommend checking for a game a local game store um even if they don't carry it if you get enough people asking about it they're probably willing they probably have some sort of supplier that carries that stuff and they can try to get it in for you. But I recommend if you have a, if you can find a local game store, just going in being like, hey, I'm interested in blank. Uh, do you guys play here? Do you have a shelf? Do you know somebody I could talk to? And they're usually, if you catch them on a good day and you know you're just kindly asking, you know, not hogging their time. That's the thing, a guy, Northern Exile, I really love his channel, he talks about it. That would be a great place to check and ask and he'll tell you. Uh, so yeah, so Facebook, Discord groups, YouTube channels, using, you know, like YouTubers, their Discords, they all have a looking for group section. Uh, if you're looking for RPGs and stuff, Roll20 has a looking for group section. That would be the best way I'd recommend checking it. Or, for the most parts, if your friends are kind of into the similar thing you're into, 
and you say buy yourself a two-player starter box for the game that you're into, they're generally willing to try it out with you and they'll might one of them might actually want to play it some more. And those would be the ways I'd recommend going through it. If you want a link to a a um, a Discord that I'm in that has some great people in it that are always willing to look to play with people like on text uh, to tabletop simulator or maybe you're somewhere in the world where you are, uh, I can link that for you if you want. Uh, I just ask, please be nice when you go in there because I I am you know vouching for you to join. So if you want that, I can link that to you. But that would be the way I'd recommend getting about how to get people to play with. And hopefully that helped answer that. So getting back into this, so our, our rule book and stuff can be anywhere between, you know, 50 bucks and more there. You can find their rules usually online for free. And then we got into, now assuming we're not getting the two player starter box because all of this is in that two player starter box and they're usually for the cost of two different armies or one whole ar army starter box depending on your game you get everything you'll need to play with uh some games like warhammer uh you'll have to buy you know some dice and some tape measures for the most part all the other games kind of give you that even if it's just like a cardboard cutout that you cut out but anyways so you're not getting the two-player starter, you're starting yourself, you're buying your supplies, you're getting your rule book, you're getting your army book if you want all the information. Usually a lot of these newer games nowadays have the basic generic rules for everything and all the armies in their book. So for bolt action, as an example, you only need the start you only need the rule book to start playing. And that is a $50 rule book where I live. And it's a nice hardcover, it's straight to the point, and that's all you'll need to play. And then what you'll need next is after this where we got our tape measure we have our dice and templates and stuff depending on your game system they may not need this next thing you're going to need is your models and this is where you have your different things usually a lot of war games follow the same sort of thing you can either buy individual jewel you can starter set Or you can go uh, uh, used. Or the fourth one now, I guess nowadays is 3D print or uh, 2D. So your options here, how you can use these is with your individual, and a lot of games do this too, especially your skirmish war games. You'll only have to buy a box. Uh, for bolt action, you literally just need to buy a, um, here's an, ex where's an example I can quickly grab here. Eh. Eh. So say if you want to get into bolt action, all you'd really have to buy to get into it is one of these boys. These are your infantry boxes, as you can see, 30, 30 dudes. Tells you what area it could be played again if you're, you want to play bolt action because maybe Games Workshop isn't cool to you but you still want that warhammer feeling because the guys who made bolt action were the dudes that actually made warhammer up to like seventh edition so if you like the old game of warhammer or you liked horse heresy or you liked how games workshop and like Donald war played company of heroes or warhammer but you didn't want to go into games workshop these are the guys you want to play and as you can see here kind of like how the models look and stuff but basically buying this one box is an army in itself and in our other videos going forwards with the series we're going to show you how to make this box into a army uh you can also use there's a guy called hollywood wargamer i highly recommend checking him out especially if you want to do just bolt action because we're going to do other games on this channel uh, bolt action is going to be mine. I'm going to have another friend do Warhammer. I'm going to have another friend do other historical games and shenanigans like uh, Black Powder, Star Wars Legion, and stuff with me. So this is all you need to start with bolt action. Other games are about the same, like uh, or some are even actually 3D print only. So like One Page Rules is a PDF you buy you get online. It's a little subscription you pay like five bucks for on their Patreon, and 
all the models you'll need, you can get three. You three D either three D print them yourself, or you can get them to three D print for you for cheap. And so you you do have multiple ways to do that. Games like Warhammer, on the other hand, or more popular ones, are a uh, general scale, or uh, you know Grand Army scale, the ones where you're playing with multiple of those boxes. They have things like combat patrols and starter boxes that you buy that gives you a whole army. And that's those are the, some of the smallest ways to start. And again, this is without doing the two-player starter box. And again, if you want to see what a two-player starter box kind of looks like, because they're all going to be kind of the same depending on what game you play, check out my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of unboxings on there for those. But that's one way to do it. That's how individual works. Starter sets, we talked about just like I said, the two-player starter box or the you know combat patrols from Games Workshop and things like that. You can do used, which is you look on like um, eBay or your local shop used and shop games sections or those discords where you can join for gamers. You can buy an army off somebody on there. You will usually end up spending a lot more on here, a little bit more on here. Not as much as if you bought all those models brand new. But uh, getting into this, we're trying to keep this under like $200 if, well, you know, in my currency or, you know, under 100 for Americans. Or if you're British, you know, you're just given to you for free because British game companies like England better for obvious reasons. Not in a bad way, but, you know. So used will get you a lot more models, but you're going to probably end up spending $200 to $500, but you're going to get an entire like three things of armies worth of dudes. And then last but not least, a lot of games and publishers are now starting to give you, and again, those 3D models that you can print off. Or even there's one guy who makes a bunch of uh, historical models that are you print on paper and you actually do origami paper craft to make 3D models. So that's your way to get into that for your models. Now after all of this, you've got your box, you've built some models, and again, don't feel threat, don't feel scared to build something wrong. Build your first models how you think is cool. If I would recommend reading your army book a little bit, because especially with bolt action, the positive side of bolt action is every unit is basically the same. It's a very easy to learn game in the sense that like, unlike Warhammer where every model or every unit is unique, in bolt action, a rifleman is a rifleman. My rifle shoots the same distance as your rifle. My SMG does the same special rules as your SMG. The only difference is how many of what you can take. So let's say for these Japanese over here, these guys, uh, only their NCO, their leader, their sergeant, depending on what you play, can have the SMG. And then everybody else has to be rifles. And you have basically six of the dude in your unit. Whereas, say, the Americans, they can have two SMGs in their squad, and they have five dudes minimum. So, kind of reading that will help you get your most money out again. If you want guides on that, we're going to be talking about that later on in this series. And yeah, and that's basically it. Once you get this stuff done, you've built those models, you've read your rule books a bit, you've maybe watched some YouTube Let's Plays, you've gone to your local store after you picked up those models you ordered and you've played or you watch some gameplay, then that's where I'd say you basically have your starting stuff. You've basically started your journey. Maybe at this point you might want to actually start painting or maybe you might want to try a different faction. Maybe you want to try reading your rulebook a little bit more in depth and actually buying a codex if you just want the core rulebook way with bolt action and seeing what that army gets and things like that. And you know, the general things I'd say to watch out for is supporting local will be your cheapest bet if you want brand new items. Buying used is going to be your cheapest bet no matter what. And Tabletop Simulator is your safest bet to try out any game. And in the end, you got all this stuff. Enjoy your journey. It is a starting. It's your, in that honeymoon period where you're happy. Just go with it. Don't ask for opinions on people. Don't try to ask like how to metagame, how to min-max, how to get the most pro out of it. Just enjoy the game. Ask simple questions. Just get into the community. Get that first game in you and see where it takes you. 
and with that we'll get into later steps of your journey what to do next so on and so forth how to get into painting what you need stuff and that's really about it that's it for this stream this video here uh last little things i can talk about unless there's other more questions to be asked and whatnot some terminology i guess i can give that we've used throughout this video is i've used core books starter armies uh, units infantry models stuff like that so starting with our rule book core book is basically the game that's where all the rules are generally they have you know your missions everything you need to play like in lore and stuff it'll be in there your your history of that that setting uh, every game has one be it digital online to physical like a hardback a two-player starter set or a starter box or a combat patrol an army box a platoon box whatever that faction or faction box is basically a the idea behind them is depending on if you want to do split it with two different people or you want it all for yourself the general idea behind these are they're made to get you a taste a flavor into how that specific faction army platoon whatever plays with generally some basic infantry some basic troops a commanding model that represents you on the field of sorts and usually some sort of like vehicle or monster or train piece that all com combines together to kind of give you a simple taste of what that army can do and then another rule to look out for when you're starting this for kind of like jargon that they might throw at you is things like infantry troop type uh, unit a lot of these are generic terms in the actual rule official rule books of your game you're playing they might call it something different but a lot of war gamers will just say that in general so a unit usually represents and is a a description to represent like the a group of models so say for example we have our six dudes here this would be a unit a minimal unit of Japanese soldiers that's what a unit is now a infantry is a sort of subtext infantry being these guys are on foot and again your army book will generally describe what it is in their section and I can actually pull it out right here for you guys if you want so you guys can confirm what I'm saying is true because it's always good to check your sources before you know just blindly agreeing Where's the infantry section here? Right, here we go. And let me just... Here we go. So as you can see here, it's one dude and six guys. So we're actually missing a model to make that unit. So these guys come with rifles. We can add up to eight men. So this stuff here, you basically want to ignore for your first point. Uh, this is basically what you're looking at right here. So we could say you built your dudes, you, bu you built your five dudes or your six dudes and your NCO. So as you can see here, as I was saying, the NCO, the leader, the sergeant, um, the commander, depending on your game, they might all call it something different. Uh, generally, a lot of people call this dude your sergeant and then your six men. And of course you have your your submachine gun SMG uh, you, depending on your game you might have a different upgrade you can take then one of those guys can take a, an LMG so say if we want to spend 20 more points we could then add a dude we can add him which is our LMG and then as we look here we have here we go give them bicycles so on and so forth now, some of these games, especially historical war games, and this is, I guess, up another positive for, um, for freaking Games Workshop, I'll give them, is they might have listings for units or upgrades for units that don't physically actually have a model yet. And this is mostly going to be more for your historical games because in a historical war game, they build things to represent history so 
there was a lot of a lot of infantry units that would have bicycles to ride around on or motorcycles in the desert and stuff so that's basically what a unit is what a, an upgrade is a, a sergeant is and normally when you play a grand army or a, a a medium army game a platoon level game as you might call it you'll have usually two two to three two to four of those then you'll generally have what is called a commander a sergeant an hq whatever and they might have special versions and that's usually a guy like this now this is um what is his name again <sighs> freaking what's his name this is what you'd call he's the dude from rogue heroes uh that the amazon show but um not darling it's i forget his name but you'll have a commander like this now this usually represents they like to say if you're playing a generic war game like warhammer uh not to say generic is in a bad way but generally this is supposed to represent you now for sterling <laughs> that's his name command captain sterling and um so this guy if sam playing desert this is captain sterling he would be my leader, my HQ unit. And then you can take things like tanks, and this is a armored unit. So normally you'll have units that can vary between one dude, one vehicle, up to 20 dudes per unit. And that's basically some of the key terminology there. Um, other team, those are basically all the terms you'll need to know when you are getting into a war game. Uh, other ones might have specific ones. Again, you'll pick those up as you listen to the, the old guard, you know, longtime players playing and when you ask the store person. But those are the main ones you'll need to know when you start. And that's basically it. The last, last little word of advice I can give you is a look into the game you want to play. You know, check their game, check the website of that game check a video or two about maybe somebody else playing it you know painting stuff kind of see if that sort of setting that amount of rules how long the game takes is what you're into and don't be afraid to tell this game owner like no or hey thank you for telling me let me go home and look into it more and i'll come back or i just want to get into it cheaply so i'm just gonna buy a box of infantry and even if it's a game like warhammer where you might need to buy multiple boxes of infantry to make a squad or a unit. And you can't just start an army out of that box like you can with bolt action or um, or, or like when you get the starter boxes for... Uh, or like Malifaux where their whole faction box is an infantry box. Then buying just an infantry unit that looks cool to you or a vehicle... I wouldn't recommend getting big monsters or big vehicles as your first model just because... Put it simply, even I have it, and if I find it, I'll post a link on it, but it's definitely on my Twitter. Your your first model is not going to look your best. And this is a hobby where you will grow and you will learn, you will get better. And I always recommend keep that first model you made. Because what it's, I still have, I sold that model, sadly, in my first one. But I have a picture of it, and seeing the difference between now and then, I'm not the best painter by any mean. And I, but that's okay for me. I don't want to get better. I find that building is what's the coolest part for me. Playing the historical narrative missions and in, in uh, campaign books is cool to me. And I paint just to get the model out. So you'll find it. Start with an infantry squad. You know, your five man, five individual models, or you know, maybe a small like jeep or a walker or something. You know, dreadnought. Paint that up. Enjoy the experience and yeah but yeah we'll see you guys in the next stream bye bye hang on there we're gonna go raid somebody you're awesome and i wouldn't be here without you guys bye 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 now stay for the raid